Hey, Miko, thanks for the introduction. My name is Chad Studer. I'm president of ADSK Solutions, and I'm presenting Sweeten It Up with Autodesk Recap today. I want to thank everybody for joining us. ADSK Solutions specializes in helping you capture and augment reality. So we are here to help you implement 3D laser scanning and any other type of capturing uh, information of existing conditions, which we'll talk about here throughout the webcast. I have uh, 26, over 26 years of Autodesk experience and solutions. I uh, started out back in AutoCAD, uh, VersaCAD, I think it was 2.6, and then AutoCAD 9, 10, 11, and worked my way through all the different solutions, and now very, very uh, big part of all the suites. I also have 16 years of 3D laser scanning experience. I actually started out when 3D laser scanners looked like this. The top of the scanner was the size of a mini fridge. I am not kidding. <laughs> uh, these days now, I spend most of my time uh, working with kinematic mobile scanning. We literally can take an IMU attached to a scanner and you can literally walk around with a 3D laser scanner capturing information. Talk a little bit more about that as we get going. Uh, so we're located in Troy, Michigan. Uh, our website is adskasolutions.com. We have a couple of blogs, pointcloudguru.com and civil3dguru.com as well. Here's the agenda for the, the next hour. We have 15 minutes of, uh, well, I guess you can skip the 15 minutes of intro or PowerPoint, but we're going to take on 15 minutes of Autodesk Recap, 15 minutes of Revit, probably Navisworks 5 minutes, and Autodesk Info, InfoWorks for uh, about 10 minutes. Uh, if we have time, we're going to do Civil 3D 2015. If we do not get to point clouds with Civil 3D, I promise we will do it the next time I do a webinar. Uh, if I add up the math here, we might be a little bit over, but we want to leave plenty of time for questions as well. And for some reason, when I do these WebExes, I always seem to talk over on every single subject. So I wanted to leave a little bit of room just to make sure. So now you get the idea of what we're going to do. Again, we're going to start out with uh, a little bit of a PowerPoint, but we are going to live on most of the products or all the products that you see here as well. So uh, stay tuned so we can get to each one of these. As we go through the WebEx, please feel free to ask questions. Type in the questions into the the box at the bottom. Unfortunately, everybody will be muted. Uh, you know, when you get a hundred people into a WebEx, one person sneezes or coughs or wrinkles the paper. Uh, everybody can hear it, so we have to mute everybody but feel free to type in your questions. If you're unable to watch the live webcast, feel free to shoot any emails to the information below in the bottom left, and we will get back to them as well. And we were recording this webcast, so we plan to provide this within 48 hours so you can watch it again. That doesn't mean you get to walk away and try and catch the recorded one later. It's always better live than it is uh, recorded, so uh, stick around and, and uh, you can ask questions and interact directly with us. So Recap Software uh, is a very new division of Autodesk. It's uh, been out for a little bit more than a year. And Recap was Reality Capture. But think about Reality Computing. It's more than just capturing information. I mean, look at the things just on the screen with laser scanning, scan to BIM, machine control, uh, survey control, augmented reality. Every time I talk to somebody, they're coming up with new ways to implement existing data into the design world. So it's more than just capturing information. We're talking about designing from the information that we capture and, and computing the information, delivering the information. You know, how, how else can we use this? And we're going to talk about that as we move forward. But uh, definitely reality computing uh, is, a, is a bigger word than reality capture at this point. So emerging technology that's been out in the market, uh, like is P20. We got uh, the 5010C from ZNF, and I think everybody's heard of the Ferro 330 as well. Uh, there's there's a uh, few other scanners out on the market, uh, Topcon, Trimble. Uh, so any, any chance you get, definitely take a look. There's there's technology everywhere these days. And again, you saw the scanner that I started out with was the size of a little mini fridge. So everything is smaller, faster. Uh, I think at that time we were getting about 3,000 points a second. And now we're capturing a million points a second as we go. 3D laser scanning is only one new technology that people have really been uh, catching on to lately. Again, I've been scanning since 1998, so it's not real new to me. Some of the newer technology that really interests me or has piqued my interest is the, the mobile scanning. I don't know if everybody's seen one of these yet, but it's, uh, it's 
very, very popular these days. Uh, Spicer Group is actually one of our clients uh, located in Saginaw, Michigan. They travel all over the United States. I actually think they're worldwide at this point. Uh, they put a Leica Pegasus on top, and they can drive highway speeds and cap capture information uh, literally from both sides of the scanner as they drive down the road. And they have, I believe, six cameras up there taking pictures. So it actually maps color to the point cloud as they drive. And we talk about mobile solutions. Literally, you can take this system and you can mount it on any vehicle, um, any cart. However you want to mount the system, it will work. As you can see, it's located on an ATV here to do off-roading, maybe some streams. Uh, also, I know they attach this to a boat and they captured shorelines as well. And that leads us to kinematic mobile scanning. So literally, uh, kind of the picture that I showed you earlier, we've jumped into this market with kinematic. Uh, we provide, sell, and rent these systems. Literally, you can put it on the trolley, as you see there on the right, and you can push this around a parking lot. You can push it around a, a university. You can take it around a racetrack. Whatever information you want to capture, literally, you just walk with it, and it's capturing information from both sides of the scanner and pulls it directly into... Uh, an iPad, uh, you know, uh, I guess a Windows Surface tablet. We can walk with it, and we can also now take this directly indoors. So we can literally scan about a million square feet in two days, and we use Survey uh, Robotic Total Station to track the scanner. Uh, just literally, just you know, outside you have uh, GPS, but when you go indoors, literally you can take uh, a prism and mount it on top, and as we walk with it, it's going to track wherever that prism is uh, in between each column and it marks exactly where it's capturing the information and we have a point cloud uh, processed immediately. There's no registration with targets. Literally as you walk, process the, the Tobol file, you know, CSV file, and we know where we are. Drones, UAVs, hopefully everybody's seen this lately. Uh, even uh, Amazon was talking about this around Christmas time a while back, how they were going to deliver packages to everybody's front door. Uh, maybe they deliver pizzas, right? Uh, instant, five minutes. They just fly over, drop it off, and uh, you can pick it up. The technology is incredible. We're just waiting on, uh, you know, the FFA, FAA to announce uh, that we can use these for everyday use. Uh, they have allowed permissions in several other countries and a little bit here and there in the United States, finally. But this is definitely the future, and this is a, an incredible way to capture information. Literally, they're just putting cameras on here, and you're taking pictures, and then the pictures can be stitched together to create a point cloud. And we'll talk about that in a little bit as well. But what if we take it a step farther, and we mount a scanner on the bottom of a UAV? So now we're capturing LiDAR data uh, from remote control, or you're telling it a waypoint, so you're saying go from A to B or A to Z and come back to me and I'll download the data myself. Uh, this is currently uh, being done. Uh, it's incredible technology and uh, just another point of where everything's going. So 3D laser scan is incredible. We also have sensors. I'm not sure if everybody's familiar with this. Anybody have an Xbox Connect? And it literally has a sensor that sits on top of the TV if you're playing volleyball in front of it. Uh, it watches you your movement. It's literally capturing everything you do and recording that information and feeding it back to the system. Uh, it was created from Prime Sex Sense. Prime Sense has now developed an iPad module. Uh, it's called a structure sensor. You can actually put this onto the iPad, and as you walk into a room, it will actually use a sensor to capture all the information as you move left or right or go in a circle directly into your iPad. Here's kind of a, a little bit of a look, uh, the information or the goal that you're trying to capture. So you walk into a room and then uh, you'd have all the information to get your dimensions. I actually have one of these. I'm hoping for the next webinar. Uh, I'm going to try it out over the July 4th weekend. I've spent some time on it, but hopefully I can show you some of the content that is being captured with this. One of my favorites is the Oculus Glasses. This is incredible technology. It was invented for gaming. It is already being used for reality capture in point clouds. I actually have a, a client that uh, purchased a scanner, went over to Australia, and actually captured uh, waterfall, an incredible uh, canyon, a remote area that no one's probably ever going to get to. 
uh, in the world. So basically he scanned it and now you can put these glasses on. It's a virtual world. Uh, they took pictures of it. They draped the pictures onto the point cloud and literally putting these glasses on will give you a virtual experience of everything that they saw and captured with their scanner. So literally you have a 3D world and they can change the temperature of the day, the time of day, they can change the weather. So literally it puts you at that location. So imagine what this can do in the future, uh, allowing us to travel basically without ever leaving our house. If you get a chance, I definitely uh, suggest trying to pair these out and taking a look at the virtual world experience. All right, so Autodesk recap. We only got 15 minutes to spend on this. The biggest questions I get is everybody's a little overwhelmed. Recap Pro, Recap, sometimes called Recap Studio, and Recap Photo. Which one's which? What do we do? Uh, what's the difference between each one? So let's go down these real quick. Recap Pro. It's the only product you actually have to pay for. Recap Studio, or we'll call Recap, is a free version. It comes with all the suites. Recap Pro. Okay, let's start there. Recap Pro is if you want to register two scans together. So to help you understand this, if we set up a scanner on the one side of a room and we move a scanner to the other side of the room to capture any information that we might be missing through shadows, we can then take the location of the first scanner that assumes 0, 0, 0, and the other scanner that did 0, 0, 0, and allow these two locations to go together as one 3D virtual space. I think of it as pieces to a puzzle. So each scan location is one piece of a puzzle that gets put together to a home piece of a puzzle to create a virtual world. So Recap Pro allows you to create registrations to put multiple scan worlds together to create that virtual world. Recap Pro is uh, can be purchased and that's the goal and kind of the theory behind it. Here's a quick idea. If you have Recap Pro, you have the ability to import raw scan data. Uh, pretty much any scanner will allow you to uh, export in the format or download directly into Recap. You can load two scans, you can load 100 scans, and literally you just go down here in the bottom right and you hit register scans. As you hit register scans, it will line them all up and you match one piece of the puzzle or one scan world to the other scan world. And you continue doing this until the entire virtual uh, point cloud is completed. I'm not going to bore you with this. Uh, it is very exciting. Uh, actually, it's very easy to use, and there's multiple webinars uh, coming up, or maybe you've already seen that. Uh, everybody talks about how easy it is to do this. Uh, once you connect two scan worlds, like you see here, you actually do get a 3D model that could look like this. Uh, literally, this was just two scans. Uh, they usually look much better than what I'm showing here, but uh, we did this at Autodesk University last year as part of a class. Uh, Again, it is very, very simple. Autodesk will tell you it's simple. So I put it to the true test. Uh, the test that I used was uh, my 20-month-old daughter. <laughs> yes, she can actually do 3D laser scanning before she's potty trained. <laughs> I set it up just as a cute picture, but before I knew it, just like her iPad, she started hitting buttons and she turned the scanner on and actually did 3D laser scanning. So she's still working on being able to put two scans together, but she is doing uh, 3D laser scanning. Uh, and it truly is, uh, you know, that easy. You just got to figure out the spacing, uh, how often you need to set up the scans and move them around correctly. With that said, how easy it is, your first job, please consult with a professional. Either you rent a scanner or you hire, uh, a, you know, a proven company that has did this over and over and over again for years. Uh, however you want to jump into the technology, make sure that you have somebody to talk to, a professional. When it goes good, it goes good. But if something does happen and you do need help, it's nice to have that person to talk to. So that's Recap Pro. Now let's talk about Recap or Recap Studio. This is the free version that comes in all the suites. And that's where we talk about sweetening it up with Recap. How many things do we get free, right? So this is free version. Uh, what can we do with it? We can process, clean, and visualize large data sets. So let's, uh, let's go ahead and take a look at that a little bit deeper. The point cloud we're going to talk, uh, I guess, you know, discuss or work with a little bit is actually from Niederveld, one of my clients out of Grand Rapids, Michigan. At least they're headquartered out of there. They have offices all over. This is one of the stadiums that they, they captured. So let's jump over to recap here just for a second. This is actually the data set that we showed with 
the putting the two scans together. Literally, this is two scans inside the free version of Recap. Just want to kind of show you, you can go directly inside the point cloud. You'll notice inside here, this is one scan that was put together with the other scan. You have bubble views, and you can literally take a look at this 3D data. As you can see down here, we can get measurements. I'm just going to go kind of quickly. Okay, uh, 11 meters, we can set that to uh, imperial units as well. Inches or feet, we can also clear any measurement after we put it in here. We can also publish this data set and everybody would have access to the actual pictures. Once you click on the bubble view, again, if this is published, your clients would have direct access to this for free. And you're literally looking at the photos here instead of the point cloud. So even though we did really dense scans with not a lot of data, you know, I'm sorry, not very dense scans, we still have the photos here to take a look at in view. And we can jump from one bubble view to the next. So we can go through the entire project looking at one image to the next all the way through here. At any time, we want to go back to our 3D view. We simply go back and we're now looking directly at the point cloud. There's a lot of different tools inside Recap that we can look at. One of them provides the ability to simply create a plane. So if we're in a factory or we're in a building, uh, we can create walls and ceilings, or maybe we just want to find all of the floor features. And simply clicking three points onto a floor will automatically find all the points on that plane. We can go in and create a region called floor. Once it's created, we can go over and you'll notice that we have a new region over here called floor. And we can turn the floor off if we want to. This would make it very simple at any time to then remove any other features that maybe we don't need or we don't want to include as part of the, the data set. I'm just going to grab this real quick to show you that we can simply remove this. You could delete this or put this on a new region as well. And we could call these chairs or we could call this noise. Uh, again, so like moving cars out of a roadway, however you want to clean up the data, you can see it's very simple. And again, uh, I can go back now over to the region and I can turn off the chairs and I can maybe turn back on the floor. So you can see how easy it is to clean up the information. So uh, we can hide or clean any information that we want up very, very easily. Working with a factory, you can say wall, ceiling, Turn them on as needed. You can export out each one as you go as well. So this is a very simple scan. So let's jump into something a little bit more fun, get everybody's attention. This is a webinar, so we want to make it a little bit more exciting. So as I said, this is from one of our local clients here. This is Niederveld and Associates, and they actually scanned uh, Michigan State University. Yes, I am a University of Michigan fan, so these uh, any booze is welcomed. <laughs> All right, so as you look around, you can see the point cloud uh, is very easy to maneuver. Uh, using Autodesk Recap, look how easy we can navigate, we can pan, we can zoom. Everything is super simple in here. There's no way you could tell there's almost a billion points located in here. Some of the other things that we can do besides uh, do clean up and get rid of the noise and the trees and the, the, the cars, maybe we want to take a look at the architectural information. Here's a hospital or university. We can go in, simply make a limit box, grab the limit box, and we can manipulate the data however we want to. As you can see, very, very important. Either if you're working with Navisworks, point clouds, recap, it's very important to narrow the data down to what's important to you. Point clouds at first are overwhelming to people. You just have to use a couple of simple tools to focus on the information that's pertinent to you and what you really want to look at. So at any time we can go back and modify these and you can change the limit box to only display the information that you want to see. So at any time we can do cross-section views in any direction. We can change uh, the cross-section from top to bottom or left to right. We can confirm the information and just like we went over before and created regions, we can create view states. 
I'm just going to call this one floor plan. And at any time, if I want to share this information or take it into AutoCAD and simply draw directly on top of it to create a 2D floor plan, I could do so. I can take all of this data, the entire point cloud to AutoCAD as well, or Revit, or at any time, one of the biggest things I see most beginners or users forget about is I want to save just the floor plan information, I can export an RCS file. If I export this file, it saves it, I open up AutoCAD, I bring this file in or into Revit or any Autodesk product for, for the most part, and directly work with just the data that I see on my screen. If I want to export everything, I can do that as well, and it's already saved. Uh, at any time, again, I can go back, and instead of looking at the floor plan, maybe I want to go to an, a saved view. So I pan or zoom to this view, and I simply go over and save a view state of the equipment room. And this incredible, it's like a virtual world. I am literally feel like I am at the stadium, and I've never been, I've been at the stadium, but I've never been inside uh, let's say the locker rooms. So literally this gives me a chance to view and feel like I'm in the locker rooms. Imagine if you're doing recruiting and you had uh, someone that couldn't travel there to see it or look at the university. Uh, I literally feel like I can understand where I'm going, where I'm going to be at. Uh, if I have to work on this as a contractor, there's no discrepancies. I know exactly what's going to be removed. Uh, you know, I can put notes in here. We can, we can do distances and markups. Uh, and, and share that with anybody. We can collaborate with everybody. Uh, so we have a lot of saved things in here. One of uh, my favorites is I never got to play college football. Believe it or not, I am 150 pounds, and I got to play high school football, though. <laughs> so I have ran on a, a university or, I guess, a, a football field in the past. It was pretty exciting. If you never had that, that chance, I'm going to give it to you right now. Uh, one of the things that you can do is pan, zoom, uh, in here so we can literally just kind of zoom in and, and and move forward as we want to but we can also go over here and go and and do a fly through so I can set the speed that I feel comfortable with point the cursor the direction I want if you've never been on the field or if you're an MSU fan uh, get ready I'd like to hear everybody do an ooh or an ah or uh, just you know what cheer this is your first time on the field and literally like uh, Notre Dame and Rudy when they ran out of the every time they, they you know hit the the wood up there at the top so this is your chance literally we're going to run right out onto the field and it puts us right there the only thing we can't do is hear the crowd yelling i'm going to go up a little bit higher here to give you guys an idea go right down the 50 yard line and uh pretty incredible right it's a uh, real world time uh literally we're on the field looking at the information so pretty remarkable. I hope that gives everybody an idea. Recap Pro is a registered data together and the actual free version of Recap is allows you to view. And you know the biggest thing, if you're just if you're already in do skin and you're you're a scanning consultant, uh, keep in mind this is the number one deliverable that you can provide to your clients. Uh, forever we've had point clouds and deliverables and clients ask, what do we get for a deliverable? you will get an Autodesk Recap deliverable, an RCS or an RCP. RCP is a project file. RCS is the actual uh, scan data itself. And it will go into the factory design suite, the building design suite, or the infrastructure design suite. So no matter what, when the client asks for what you're going to give them, it will work with whatever they were doing. So keep that in mind. A couple other quick ones just for fun. Uh, you know, if you're not a... Uh, MSU fan or a stadium person, how about the architectural world, right? Maybe you're an architect, maybe you're a civil 3D, maybe you're an engineer, whatever that is. I want to take a look at some other quick data that we captured. Uh, again, very easy to capture the information with 3D laser scan. This is completely on survey control, comes in very clearly. Uh, as we pan or zoom, you can obviously see a parking lot, some roadway design. You can even see an intersection that was captured back here. Okay, all brought into Autodesk Recap. There's actually a, a bank over here to the left. And again, I'm moving around seamlessly with billions and billions of points. Maybe we want to look at just the building because we are the architect. Maybe we want to take a look at just the first floor. We are immediately inside the building. As you can see, they actually removed all the ceiling tiles to give us access to all the HVAC 
mechanical information as well. If you want to take a look at uh, maybe the, well, let's go. You know what? Just to show you, there's so much in here. There's you know the restrooms, uh, the second floor. We can take a look at. We can pan zoom. We can walk through it. We can zoom through it. Uh, we can go to original coordinates. We can take a look at the MEP room. Uh, you can see instantly how easy it is to collaborate with anybody on a project using August Recap. One of the things I don't think we're going to go into directly here because of time. But one of the things that I like is you can actually do structural analysis on a wall. Uh, most people don't understand how to do this, but I may we'll make this part of another WebEx. But literally, you can go in here and you can tell um, Recap that you want to change the origin. So I'm going to update the origin. So instead of X, Y, and Z being uh, true co coordinates, I can literally go in here and hit Enter. And then I can hit Tab, and it will literally change the direction of the wall. So in this case I could tell it as we change this you can see I can have Z go out of the wall. Let's move this a little bit so you can see it. So instead of Z being up I can change the direction there we go and change X and Y. So the idea instead of Z being up, I can have Z be in the out direction. And what this is going to do is tell me if the wall is structurally going left or right in any direction. In other words, uh, I will know if the wall is out of line structurally. So we won't go into all the details, but it is pretty neat that you can set the Z vector, bring it into Civil 3D, and then color it by elevation. Uh, again, it won't go into all the details, but something to look forward to. You can actually go in here and it will color it by elevation. You can set all the different parameters to adjust the elevations. And again, it would adjust the elevation by the wall being uh, structurally sound. So if it's out 200, so we could set it to be red. If it's out uh, 400, so it could be a different color. We can also change the intensity. Uh, we'll put it back to normal here. And of course, we have RGB colors as well. So very cool, easy to do, easy to manipulate all the data in here and also to go back to the original point cloud. Uh, one other one was part of recap is from mobile scan data. Brought in directly from the Spicer group, you can see that we have a couple miles of roadway here. Uh, I guess we already showed you how to fly through it, so we'll just kind of pan and zoom. Show you literally you can drive at highway speeds and look at the incredible data that is captured and can be shared with anybody using the free version of Recap. Yes, this data goes directly into Civil 3D. And if you set a Civil 3D point on any topo position, you can then copy them and say sign, fire hydrant, curb, gutter, uh, top of curb, sidewalk, and literally just copy the points wherever they got to go, and they will automatically update with the true elevations in Civil 3D. Uh, if you check out my blog, civil3dguru.com, you can draw a feature line to a node, 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 node right down the center line and export that as XML. And you can create a profile directly from point cloud information and then attach an assembly and look at cross sections. Uh, again, I hope to show some of that in the future. Hopefully this gives everybody a great idea of the potential of topos and what we can do with mobile data. And literally, how, if anybody's ever used LiDAR data, any oohs and ahs out there, we used to have to bring in one in every 10,000 points and you didn't get anything. Literally, we can look at the pavement markings on the road. This is captured highway speeds. I mean, look at the signals and the wires and the information that's captured, right? No oohs and ahs. I see a couple getting typed in now, all right? Everybody's kind of understanding. This is incredible. Very seamless. Seamless navigation. All right, hopefully everybody gets the idea of Autodesk Recap. And again, the free version uh, is part of the suites. Let's go ahead and jump over to back to the PowerPoint here for a second. So we looked at Recap Pro. We looked at Recap. Now, there's also Recap Photo. This is uh, incredible software. Make sure you check out some of the other Autodesk presentations that are coming out. Literally, you just take pictures. And as long as you have overlap, you can take these pictures, upload them to Recap Photo. Uh, just make sure that you use Google Chrome and you have an Artist 360 account. Literally, you upload these photos, check the ones that you want to use, and then send them in. 
and you just request an RCS file, an OBJ file, you know, a point cloud or a mesh in return, and literally it will give you back a point cloud of the pictures that you uploaded. Now, uh, my advice to everybody is to start out with something very simple like I did here. I actually took a picture of one of our P20s and just uh, took pictures, went around it very quickly with a simple iPhone. You know, I had big intentions in my first project. I'm going to do my house. I'm going to do this hospital. I'm going to I'm going to do this university, right? But I kept putting it off. So do something very simple, something that you know is going to work. Don't put a lot of time in it. Just do something very simple. Learn from it. And then do something next time a little bit better, a little bit better, a little bit better. I hear a lot of people saying that I did it and it just didn't work. Uh, make sure you do not select preview mode. That's only for you to upload it and get it back very quickly to see if uh, you like what you get. Uh, make sure you go to a higher quality than that. And uh, the other one is log on, Autos 360. Make sure you have Google Chrome. And as long as you have 40% overlap in each of your photos, take it from uh, multiple angles. There's YouTube videos out there. Catch one of Dominic's videos that's coming up. He can explain this in very, very high detail. Uh, you know, just take your time. Uh, it's incredible. And I uh, wish everybody luck on their first project. So let's recap photo. We're going to actually come back and I'll, I'll show you some high-end information that's been captured as well here in a little bit. But we want to move. I think I'm already over my 15 minutes on recap. Uh, like I always talk a little bit too long. So we're going to jump to Autodesk Revit, scan the BIM process. I hope everybody's learned uh, and understands uh, BIM, Building Information Model. Uh, you know, it's building a 3D model and, and literally seeing it in 3D, making sure it goes together, putting schedules together, and actually watch it being built basically in Navisworks before it is built to catch anything that, that could go wrong uh, during the building process. Well, what do you do for existing buildings? How, how do we go back and capture that government building that's been there for 100 years? You want to do a tape measure, plumb bobs, uh, you know, what about the accuracy that you're getting? So now you can go to a site, quickly scan the information, bring it back, and you have a virtual world that you can share with everybody. You don't have to walk through 100 different construction companies or design companies or architects to have them analyze the information that's there. There's no discrepancies. Hey, you had the same scan data as the other company did. So instead of getting them a plot of, you know, as-built drawings from 50 years ago, here's updated information, scan data that everybody's going to bid on to do a re reconstruct of the building. You know, renovation. So a couple of things. The first thing uh, a lot of people run into is when you're working with Autos Revit, maybe the point clouds are a little slower than you thought. Make sure you install all the updates. Make sure you have a hot fixes. Make sure everything is is uh, up to date. Same with the recap. Uh, recap is a little bit different than most software we use. There's not an update uh, you know, once a year or every three months. Literally they are working on this program constantly. So every day, every you know, once a week, look for an update. They are literally updating it and moving on the product uh, uh, all the time. A uh, couple of things in Revit, things that help you down, help you out, just like it did with the recap, is you have to narrow down the data. If someone gives you a 3 million square feet factory, 3 million square feet hospital, do not load it and work with the entire file uh, without using a section box or cropping the information. You're not going to get anywhere. Okay, like I showed you with the stadium, narrow down the data that's pertinent to you, export just that data and work with that. At least as you get familiar with it, work with small data sets and grow off of that. Uh, basically, once we get the information narrowed down, we're going to accurately detail it. I'm not going to go through all the Revit steps. You guys know how to draw doors, windows, walls. Uh, I just want to show you how to limit or kind of minimize the data in the point cloud and work with Revit quickly. And hopefully, if I remember, I'm going to show you the Green Building Studio that most people or clients that I work have no idea that's in there. But it will actually give you a lot of information about a Revit model once it's completed. So let's go ahead and jump over to Revit here just for a, a second. Or let's say about uh, 15 minutes. How's that? <laughs> uh, let me go ahead and close out of this one just for a second. And what I want to do is actually start with something very simple. So this is the two scans that I showed you in the Recap Pro and uh, a simple room that we did at Autos University. So once you open up Revit, all you have to do is go up here to Insert Tab, Point Cloud, and select an RCP file, RCS, or some of the other uh, different 
uh, options here, LAS is uh, last file for mobile data, E57, uh, very popular between all information, and of course, uh, feral data directly. As you bring it in, any point cloud you bring in, typically we do origin to origin. Once you have it into Revit, I want to quickly point out that you can pan and zoom very quickly with millions and millions of points in here. This is a small data set, but we'll definitely lar load a larger one to give you that option. One of the first things you'll do once you get it in here is maybe switch to something very simple like a, like maybe a top view. Once you get the top view, uh, you want to make it easy. You want to be able to rotate your information. Uh, put it on you know, a grid, something that's easy to draw or work with. So simply select the point cloud or you know, go to modify, but we want to grab the rotate tool. Uh, we'll move the base point here real quickly to the corner. Once we have it to the corner, we can reference the other corner and then simply drag this out to rotate the point cloud to make it straight. Again, I'd probably go to my elevation view and do the same thing and, and just make sure there's there's no uh, leaning to the floor. Uh, again, depending on the as built and the information that you need, maybe you'll need to work with it on a slight angle, but if you can, of course, it's, it's better to make it and simplify the data. You also notice as I move off of it, I get the true colors. Uh, one of the other things you might run into is you might have to scale the point cloud. If it's in metric or imperial units, we can go in and, and modify that as well. Uh, once you have the information, as I hover over it, it's also going to highlight it and it always colors the point cloud. Uh, kind of gets in your way. You can also go to select and unselect select links, and it will no longer do that. The problem is I can no longer select it as well. This can also be located down here in the bottom left and simply turned on and off. So after you get it rotated, feel free to turn that off. Uh, as I go into maybe a 3D view, uh, an easy tip, of course. Uh, anybody who uses Revit knows, knows this stuff. There isn't uh, a lot here that's, that's new, but uh, working with the point clouds, again, the goal is to really narrow down the data that you're working with. So a couple of quick tips is use the section box in 3D, narrow down the information, Again, this is a very simple one, but we can move quickly and, and, and kind of see this. So again, just grab section box, grab the grips, and narrow this down. If you want to you want to get rid of maybe the roof so you can see inside it, depending on what the goal is or what the deliverable is, only have it show the information that's pertinent to you. We don't need to show all the information. Uh, again, we, we talked about the cropping, uh, the different views as well. Rotate this one more time here. We'll turn this one back on. Okay, We can simply go to different views. Maybe we want to see level one. All right. So maybe we have a 2D view and we want to draw a floor plan. We can go to draw walls and just kind of go endpoint to endpoint to endpoint. We could go to level two. You could go to a roof level. You could go to the site level, right? And we'll, we'll talk about this, but basically uh, if I switch to any elevation view I can simply select my level lines my guides and then when I draw my walls I could assign this to each level that I wanted to draw so again very simple information very easy way to lay this out and now as I draw a wall I can say from level 1 to level 2 or level 1 to the ceiling however I want to name these uh, and these are going to be the guides and we can simply uh, Place the information as we go. Go back to 3D view here just so we can uh, see it. And we can set up views of cameras to actually see inside the information as well. Okay, and literally this is a point cloud. It almost looks like a photo inside Revit here to, to help us get that information. All right, so I wanted to talk about something simple there. Let's go ahead and close these out real quick. I got a lot of information to show, show you, to continue to show you, so I want to minimize these and close these out. Uh, we'll go back up and open up something a little bit more impressive. Believe it or not, this is uh, the Marriott Hotel. All of this data was captured from, a, from uh, photos. This is actually flown uh, with a 3D helicopter, and literally pictures were taken of this entire area using recap photo just like I did with the scanner 
they uploaded the photos and we put it together and we have a 3D model up a 3D point cloud that we can pan and zoom and, and, and look at all of the data seamlessly inside of Revit. Okay, so again we, we go to 3D, we take a look at the 3D section view. You guys saw that, that's all pretty simple. So in a higher end, or what, what can we do in a, a bigger perspective here? So a bigger project, same idea, we just want to narrow down the data. Uh, as you guys know, you can go in, you can create uh, a site plan inside of Revit, right? Uh, this, is, this is just narrowing it down, maybe a clip view. Uh, once we have this information, we can start going to maybe an elevation view. We take those level lines and we put them at different information. Right, or, or you know, maybe uh, let me show you a couple of these other ones here quickly. Okay, also uh, very simple. Uh, back in our site view, you can go ahead and go up here and then you can create a section view. Right, simply say create section, draw that section uh, inside here. And as you create that, that section view, we can go down and then take a look at the section that we created. Now you can see level one. Uh, this is going to be level two, but we didn't really have a floor there, so we did level three, four, five, and, and so on. Uh, as we zoom in and look at this data, you can tell uh, from the data itself where the windows are and see each level. And of course, once we do this and we break out the levels, now we can go back and view every single level. Okay? whichever level gives us the best information we would go up and we would go to architecture and we would go ahead and start drawing the walls between the different levels and as we go we can snap to uh, each of the point clouds as you can see and you would just do endpoint to endpoint to endpoint and we can zoom in and whichever level we are we can start adding the windows as well so if level one's not giving you the best view of the data you go to level three we go to level four and so on until you get the best view of the point cloud to help you accurately draw in the walls, the doors, uh, the windows, the structural elements, the steel, the roof, uh, again, all the information that's pertinent to you. Okay, we also have uh, ceiling plans that we broke out. Uh, and again, going back to the section of view to help you understand uh, how that was done. Okay. We'll go back to the 3D view to give you an idea what we're easily able to draw from breaking out the different section lines. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and select the point cloud. Again, I can't do that unless I go down and turn on the select links options. Uh, again, if you're not familiar with this, every time you hover over it, the whole point cloud is selected and you can see that it is uh, very distracting and a lot of people just don't want to work with point clouds for that alone. So uh, in this case, we simply want to select it we can go back up here and we're going to uh, turn off the point cloud and you can see the, the quick model just in a, a couple hours was derived from the point cloud. Uh, we drew one row of windows and simply copied those up to each of the levels. Okay. Uh, one of the other things that we can do in here under the analyze tab, again as long as you have an Autodesk 360 account, uh, you have to be on subscription and you can do run energy simulation uh, using any Revit model. This will give you information back about the, the model. Uh, instead of waiting for it to, to come back to us here, uh, literally it comes up and this is the information from a simple Revit model. So we have the location of the model. Uh, of course that gives us uh, the performance factors, the energy efficiency. Uh, companies spend you know, weeks or months gathering this information in the spreadsheets and creating information like this. As you can see, uh, we have the energy efficiency of the entire building, simply knowing the location of the building, uh, you know, from the Revit model itself, what information was provided. And all from going up to run energy simulation, this was created. Okay. Again, uh, unfortunately this isn't training, but I want to give you an idea of everything that's available to you and what, what's capable and what's out there. Uh, going back here to the, the PowerPoint, uh, this model was created directly from that, and this is uh, the information we looked at earlier in, in recap. 
Uh, here's just some ideas from Scan to BIM, some of the things maybe you haven't thought about. Uh, it's really unlimited what we can do. Uh, as you can see, there's a true Revit model directly created from that scan data. Uh, plans, factory schools, uh, universities, hospitals. Uh, I don't even have probably 10% of the things on here. Every time I talk to a client, uh, they come up with something new. Oh, we're scanning a Hollywood set, and then we're modeling it. So they know where to put all the cameras so the actors aren't waiting to see where uh, on site that they need to be. They're, you know, There's no downtime. Uh, it's really incredible. Augmented reality, the... The, the client that went out and, and scanned, uh, you know, the the actual waterfall, the, the canyon, and, and putting you there in real world, uh, it's really moving quickly and capturing data uh, at this time is incredible. So hopefully that gives you some more ideas of scan to BIM and workflows. Uh, you know, what else do you do with, with scan to BIM? And we have this model, this existing as-built data of government buildings. Uh, well, I thought this was pretty interesting, and one of the things we did and offer for clients is computational fluid dynamics. It's called CFD. All you need is a Revit model, and you simply plug in uh, the heat and the cold uh, from the locations, and it will automatically do thermal, basically models of showing you where the hot and cold is, and then you can go in and fix it. Uh, if you look at the second thing there, 1 in 17, Americans, Americans will die due to infections contracted while in a hospital. Uh, unfortunately, my dad was actually in the hospital for quite some time, and the biggest warning was we got to get him out of here. The longer he's in here, the less chance he has. Uh, he spent at least 60 days in the hospital. We were very lucky to be able to take him home after that, uh, especially after looking at these numbers. But think about, you know, of that infections from the hospital. So look in the far right here. Uh, all acute care hospitals have construction plans in the next three years. Okay, to improve on this, uh, let alone the CFD potential there to help clean up, uh, you know, the, you know, the viruses and the different things that are being spread to get cleaner air. So we can see that there's going to be a ton of existing hospitals that need to be scanned, and they're going to go to scan the BIM to get the model, and then into computational fluid dynamics to, to uh, calculate the information. So incredible workflows available to using the building design suite. Uh, I'm not going to talk much about manufacturing. Just wanted to throw this out to you if you were trying to catch on to something with scanning and manufacturing uh, today. Uh, this is a quickly uh, a proof of concept we did, 450,000 square foot uh, manufacturing facility. And when they came to us, this is the only as-builds they had, simple 2D drawing. Uh, we were able to take the 3D point cloud, overlay it directly on the 2D because they're not familiar with working in 3D, and we could find... Uh, multiple columns that were rotated the wrong direction that were maybe moved off of, uh, up to a foot. Uh, you know, garbage in, garbage out. Every time they go out and measure off a column, uh, it was incorrect as-built data. So when they went to do the design, it, was, it wasn't going to be correct. After we left, you can see the information here in the bottom of what they actually had to work off of. Uh, it's really incredible, the difference, and how easy the data was captured and how quickly we were able to provide it to the client. So make sure you catch one of the WebExes in the future, or webinars that are going to describe manufacturing as well. We're going to jump into Navisworks. Again, factory, as build data with any government building, hospitals, universities, uh, parking lots, uh, on the civil end as well. Uh, Navisworks brings in directly a recap format, RCS, RCP file. We're going to take a look at some section tools. We can do some markups. We can save, collaborate with clients, uh, clash detections, and create animations. So working directly inside Navisworks, uh, you know, you just go up here and simply uh, open or append or say new and bring in uh, an RCS file or Revit file. This again is uh, the exact same building that you saw earlier in uh, Recap. Uh, you know, Navisworks is the same way. You can pan, zoom, uh, do walkthroughs to give you some examples. If you haven't used Navisworks, uh, it's an incredible program. Uh, it's a little bit different than maybe AutoCAD or Revit that we're used to using, but if you spend a little bit of time in it, it's very easy to work with and to utilize workflows. Uh, in this case, I'm working on a 3D view, and we're literally inside the building. And if you look closely, you can see the Revit model is drawn so tightly around here, you know, accurately detailed like we talked about earlier, so you can only see small parts of it. You can see the railing. Right, so literally the Revit model is drawn directly on top of this. We have all the lighting, the HVAC, the MEP, as you saw earlier. 
take a look at a couple other views here. You can see some of the doors in the background as well. Uh, I call this my mouse trap view. Uh, if anybody knows, you can actually do walkthroughs inside of uh, uh, Navisworks, which is kind of neat. So literally you can give tours of the, the building and the site. And what I want to show here is you can actually see the Revit model uh, brought in with the point cloud. I think this one shows it a little bit better and literally we can walking directly on top of this. You can change the avatar out to whatever we want to display. You can see the ceiling information is showing up there as I go. Uh, this is an example. You know, we can go in here very quickly under review. We can add text. We can draw revision clouds and we can even add tags uh, that link us uh, to all sorts of information that's available as part of that calibration or um, collaboration as well. So we can save these views, share these out to everybody amongst the project team as well. <clears throat> uh, one of the other ones I, I really like about Navisworks is being able to share the information or check the model against the point cloud. Uh, again, you can see how, how quickly it loads as I I review the data if we want to pan and zoom. Uh, it, the data just looks incredible in here. Uh, you know, this is over a, a webinar, right, as we're looking at this information. So let's take a look at sectioning tools. Uh, let's go back in here and turn on plane six. Whoops, let's change plane six, hopefully to a top view. There we go. And look how seamless that we can review this data using sectioning inside Navisworks. So we can look at the structural steel if it's modeled in here. We can look at the MEP, we, you know, the lights, the, the columns, whatever information uh, that was derived. So if you look real close, you can see the Revit model actually has the lights in here. A very, very simple way to compare your data. We can link the sections so we can go to, you know, one foot or two foot uh, data in here. We can again go left and right as well. And you can see the lights. We actually have uh, you know, all the plumbing, uh, even the sprinkler systems, everything is defined in here, even the ceiling grids, which is kind of cool. So again, Navisworks is a great tool and part of the suite that I encourage everybody to use. Uh, the clash detection, narrowing down the data is very important and this is a great tool to quickly look at all that. So I could spend all day just on Navisworks, all day on Revit, uh, all day on each of these topics, but I just want to give everybody a great chance to, to view the information. Uh, one of the tips I'll give you also in Navisworks is you open it up, uh, you append your information, make sure you go to Options, locate the recap information here, and uh, you can turn off uh, some of these tools. Uh, one of them is using the, the Clersion uh, curling here. So what this is going to do is when you pan or zoom, the point cloud looks visually much better than it would otherwise. And also scaling the point cloud so the point clouds don't get great big rectangles or squares for you. Okay. Again, we can also record animations. We can do uh, schedules for uh, construction. All right, hopefully everybody enjoyed uh, Navisworks. So let's go ahead and uh, jump into Infrastructure Design Suite. Again, I was hoping to show Civil 3D, uh, but I guess I get a little bit too winded. Uh, it's really incredible. You can create DTMs from literally the, the actual point clouds themselves. You can extract topographical features. You can copy points from one object to the next, as we talked about before. Uh, but we want to talk about Infraworks. A lot of people uh, don't understand Infraworks or had a chance to take a look at this. It creates compelling information uh, for you know stakeholders for information. If anybody knows what the photo is there, please type it in. Uh, you know, what it reminds me of, I guess, not necessarily the photo. Has anybody ever played the games called Sims, where you build virtual cities, virtual worlds, and you put it together? I never actually had the pleasure of this, but I know a lot of people that have. A lot of people talk about that. I relate Infoworks to this. We are actually building uh, small cities very quickly using GIS data. You can actually bring in a Revit model directly into Infoworks. Uh, CAD drawings, microstation files, pretty much any information that we want to view, uh, all in a collaborative scene uh, that allows us to build small cities or pull information in to make 3D presentations. 
We can also bring in point clouds, uh, which is what I want to show you here. This is a pretty good example of an actual virtual world that was put together in InfraWorks. I really didn't use InfraWorks at first. I saw these small cities and I was like, that is going to take me a million years to create. Whoever has time to do that. You have to be a college with a million students or everybody would have to kind of put information up there at different times. This has to be almost impossible. I jumped into the software and believe it or not, uh, I started looking for GIS data, pulling it in, and literally I'm going to show you how to create a model like this in the next 10 minutes. So let's take a quick look at InfraWorks. I'm going to go ahead and open up a quick model. All the data shown here you can recreate directly like I did. Uh, I went to a website to find DTM and orthographical information. I'll try and post where I got this uh, from the website, but basically I think it was USGS and it was a free viewer that I was able to grab. I can't remember the exact name of it uh, off the top of my head right now, but basically went in and grabbed the surface information. So just uh, a DTM, or I'm sorry, this is actually a DEM. And to show you how simple this was, I went to data sources. And from inside here, I pull, used the pull down. And I said, I want to bring in uh, a raster image. Yes, a raster image. And I went in and located an ADF file. That's what was downloaded. And that was my DTM. You can see it also will bring in a DEM as well. Uh, once I brought that information in, let me go ahead and show it to you while we're here. DTM, updated DEM. Oops, I got the zip file there. And you can see I brought in all sorts of ADFs that were downloaded for free. I grabbed the largest one, and this is what came in. So very, very simple. Uh, it takes up hardly any memory as we pan and zoom around. And you can see the actual train. I know this doesn't look so good, right? Not even close to what I was going to show you here. There is an example. It takes 10 minutes. So the next thing I did is went up here and I said, well, I need some images. Let's drape images on top of that surface. So what's the next step? Well, let's bring in some more raster images. Uh, go to my location as I downloaded everything. I put it in nice organized information. Huge tip to help you get through this as well. I want to grab orthographical images. I really don't remember which are which here. It looks like I have a few TIFFs. Uh, I'm going to grab these updated images. And instantly they or orthographical images so they will directly overlay on top of the surface. As you use this program you will notice anything that I bring in it never shows up and it's very frustrating. All you have to do is simply go back over to each object as you bring it in simply double click on it or uh, hit refresh. In this case I just told it that I want to do ground imagery. So what type? Uh, it's raster information, it's aerial information and I want it to uh, refresh. And just like that, it automatically drapes directly onto my surface. I'm only bringing in a few of the images instead of all of them. And instantly you will see the images show up directly on top of my surface. Oops, I gotta hide something here just for uh, a second. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and zoom in. And you'll notice I am a University of Michigan fan, so we are actually at Ann Arbor here, and we're taking a look at the University of Michigan. I thought I'd kind of keep with the theme that we've shown earlier. There's uh, Comerica, or uh, you know, Tiger Stadium is, is on our web, uh, our, uh, what do you call it, our blog as well, of some information we captured. Uh, not everybody does stadiums, but just wanted to kind of, you know, it's something fun to do, something to kind of keep everybody's attention. So keep in mind you can do this with anything. Uh, what I really want to point out is I went to the City of Ann Arbor's website, completely free. Everybody can recreate exactly what I'm doing in 15 minutes as well. Simply go to their website and download some information. So what's the next step? Literally, I have orthographical images on top of this train. Literally, I think this is all I need. I mean, this is a great presentation at this point, right? I can bring in a Revit model. I can start talking to the client. This is already better than in a 2D image in color. But let's take it to a, a step farther. Now that we have this information, what else can we bring in? Well, shape files are very, very common throughout all the GIS world. The problem with shape files is everything you bring in is pretty much 2D. InfraWorks is now taking that to a new level and it's going to display everything in 3D. So I'm going to go over here and let's go ahead and just line this up and let's take a look at one of our roads. 
So as you see this road, it's just an image that's kind of blurry. Go back, locate your shape file that you downloaded. I'm going to go to my shortcut. Look in here for roads. And there's an SHP for roads. I'm going to load it in. Again, nothing shows up. So we simply go back, double click on the roads that we just loaded. I'm going to tell it what type of feature I'm bringing in. I'm bringing in some roads. I can set it to 2D, low roads, 4D, depending on what the is provided in the shape information. I simply click OK. And instantly now I have all the roads mapped for the entire county or city through my entire map of this, the county here. Right? True roads with rendered material. Isn't that incredible? Let me zoom in on one of these real quick. Right? Lanes. You can put sidewalks. You can pretty much do whatever you want with it. All right, what else do we have for shape files? We're going to go back in, go to shape files again, go back to uh, the city or Ann Arbor. What we have, you see the DTM, the orthographical images. Uh, I could bring in trees, I could bring in buildings. Uh, let's go ahead and bring in the point cloud. I think some of you might have already seen that. I was trying to cheat a little bit. Uh, I did bring it in a little bit ahead of time. But let's go ahead, you would just simply go to the pull down, point cloud, and you would select the RCS file. When you click open, it would just bring it in on the exact coordinates. If you don't have the coordinates, you just have to place it interactively. And just like that, now we have a virtual world tied in to a simple 2D map that gives us a 3D world or a 3D look of everything. Right? Let's go ahead and take a look at this. I want to thank uh, Midwestern Consulting, one of our clients in, in Ann Arbor, Michigan, for providing this data. And for giving everybody an idea of how you can use Revit data, point clouds inside InfoWorks. Now, if I had a Revit building directly like the one I showed you, I would just go over here just like I did everything else and just bring in a Revit RVT file. That's it. And now I can start building the virtual world. I can do line of sight. Uh, there, there's a million things we can do in InfoWorks. This is a small portion just to introduce it to you. Uh, the, one of the things I want to I want to show is the, the shape files as well. Uh, you can bring in building footprints, okay? So instead of a 2D world, just like you saw in that last map that I showed you, instantly, uh, you know, don't forget to refresh the information. But if I go in here and say, yep, these are buildings, just like that, it's going to automatically convert all the 2D shapefiles to 3D information from the properties provided. Now what do we got? We just created a virtual world of all the information in here. Again, I thought this would take weeks, hours, days, months, even a year. Look at this. Look what we have now to work with. And we did it in five minutes, literally from downloads off a website. Right? So, you know, I made the mistake thinking how hard and how difficult this is. This has to be impossible. Literally, as you can see, it's not. I pulled the data directly off a public website. Uh, this isn't a data set. And I was able to throw it in here very, very quickly. Uh, let me see if I can find. Uh, there was a lake in here as well. If not, we'll uh, we'll add one to the golf course, I guess. <laughs> Oops. Let me pan a little bit farther back. Again, I'm I'm moving seamlessly in here as well. Let's zoom in here. This looks like a little bit of water. Ah, that's not fun. All right, I can't find a huge area of water, so we're going to add. Uh, like my golf game, wherever I want to hit the ball, there's always water. Literally, in InfraWorks, go in here. You can add houses, trees, symbols, railroad tracks, roads, uh, to give you an idea. But I'm going to go over here, and I'm going to say, uh, there's a, we want to place some water. You literally draw a 2D polyline. And I'm not kidding. The program is this easy. I'm not sure. It might even be easier than Recap. But literally, uh, all I do is complete drawing uh, my polyline. And literally, I have moving water. And now when I tee it up, my golf ball will go in the water. <laughs> it always happens. It doesn't matter where the water is. Uh, but isn't that incredible? Some more oohs and ahs out there, right? Uh, I just want to show you why, why are we working in 2D. Uh, 3D information was difficult. We can go in here. We can select uh, you know, a variety of trees, simply draw uh, a polyline where these trees should be. And instantly, we can place trees uh, in our scenes, you know, again, buildings, houses, railroads. Uh, it's incredible the amount of information. 
Uh, we know clients and anything in color, you add 3D, is overwhelmed. It's, it's, it's incredible to me what we can do. So bringing in recap and point clouds into the GIS world, to me, uh, really brings any area together. Uh, so I hope you guys enjoyed this presentation. I want to thank everybody for their time. Uh, anything else I can help you on, please let me know. Uh, I want to thank Midwestern again for the, the data file and allowing me to show you guys how easy it is to bring point cloud data uh, into uh, InfraWorks. Again, if we brought in 10 miles of roadway with Spicer, that would be incredible. We could do uh, intersection designs as well. Maybe we'll spend a little bit more time on the E&I portion of this, uh, you know, engineering uh, next time as far as civil. Uh, again, I want to thank everybody for their time. Here's some uh, the product page. Please take a look at Recap if you enjoyed this this webinar. Uh, take a look at the blog. You know, please stay informed, stay up to date. You make sure you have all the updates. Uh, some of the forums. We have a YouTube channel. This is going to be posted in the next 48 hours as well. And please uh, send all your emails uh, to recap.community at autos.com. Uh, please let everybody know that you enjoy this WebEx. Uh, we enjoy it. We like to do more of it. Uh, we only get to do it if you guys provide feedback that you enjoyed it as well. So again, thank you for your time. Again, I want to thank everybody for your time. If you made it till the end of this webinar, uh, here's my email address. If you have any direct questions uh, for me, feel free to shoot me an email and I'll try to address them as well. Again, thank you for your time. Look forward to seeing you on the next webinar.